All right, welcome back. Well, this is going to be the fourth video uh, to add in some some more features to our little GUI here. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add in some radio buttons. Now, radio buttons look and behave a lot like checkbox objects. The big difference is with checkboxes, I can kind of select all the items or multiple items, right? That's the idea. With a radio button, the idea is you can only choose one item. So it's uh, you know, like the radio in your car can only play one radio station at a time. Same thing applies here. So what we'll do is we're going to add one more, uh, one more uh, little set of items over here. Um, we'll put in, I don't know, our favorite programming languages. So let's get started. So we're going to go into Scene Builder here. And let's pick up another VBox. Place it right over here. And we'll set it up to be the standard size. So layout, we made them all 200 by 300. 200 by 300. Looks like it fits beautifully. All right. So the next thing we'll do is we'll add in a label. So I'll drag my label over, place it in. And let's say this are our radio button. Let's add in a few radio buttons. So you just scroll down. I'm in the control section. Scroll down. Here's a radio button. Let's add this one in. So we'll make this one PHP. And the next uh, radio button can be Java. And the next one in here will be. Let's see, what's another good language here? C sharp. C sharp. And let's add in C. And then what we'll do is we'll put a little label at the bottom to see which one is selected. So we'll put a little label in here. So label. And we'll plop it in here. Now again, they're all nice and tight together, so what we're gonna do is we're going to click on the actual vertical box we'll go to the layout and we'll increase the spacing to 10. there we go now it looks that looks nice okay so we'll hit save go back into netbeans now remember uh, in previous videos we talked about this what we just did is we updated the view which is just an xml document that places components, like objects, inside of uh, the scene. That's what it does. The controller is what actually, you know, communicates back and forth with the view and tells it what values to put in the fields or it can pull information from the fields. The controller is really what's in charge here. And it will talk to uh, models like other classes that we create. So if we want to control how our radio buttons work, we're going to do it all in the controller. So let's get started. Now, when you go into a uh, <clears throat> into a GUI, the first method gets called is the um, <coughs> excuse me, hmm, the the initialize method. And if we were to run our program right now, you know, if I were to if I were to hit the play button, here it comes up. Actually, I see I've got a couple of these little labels here that show the word label, which I don't want. So let's quickly clean those up. So that's the combo box. So let's go combo box label, set the text to blank. Let's say these, these items are for configuring the radio buttons. Looks like I got a little spelling mistake in my previous video. Okay. So here I'm going to say, well, we actually haven't uh, we haven't actually given our uh, our radio buttons or our labels any names yet. So let's go up here and add. So I'm just inside of the class, and these are um, these items are for the radio button example. 
So what did we choose? We have PHP and Java. So we're gonna say at FXML. So again, uh, if you don't remember from the previous videos, the at FXML is there so that our controller can communicate with the um, with the uh, the actual view. That's the the linkage. And we'll say private, and these are radio buttons. And I'm gonna say PHP radio button. We have four of them. Add in our imports. Make sure again, because the radio button exists in um, older versions of the GUIs. Uh, specifically, they've got uh, in the AWT, I believe it's AWT. Um, so make sure you get the right imports. You always take the Java FX ones. So let's see, then we had Java. C plus plus, and then we have a label. Let's save. So we can go back down to our initialize method, and now let's clear up that label. So we called it the radio button label. Let's set the initial text. Blank, Let's save. And I'm going to go back into Scene Builder and connect up all of those names that I just gave it. So we just created all of these names uh, for our instance variables. Now, what we have to do is we go into Scene Builder and we make sure that um, the XML knows what PHP radio button is. So let's go over into Scene Builder. Here's my PHP radio button. If I go down to code, you can see here the FX ID, and I'll take the PHP radio button. And then I'll go to Java and take the Java radio button. C sharp, C. And then the last thing here is our radio button label. And we hit save. Okay, so you can see it's saved. We go back into NetBeans. Now, close. If we run it at this point, it's going to look nice, but it won't behave the way we want. So, the idea with radio buttons is you can only select one of them, but as it is right now, I can select all of them. So what we have to do is we actually have to tell um, we have to tell the uh, your program that these things are kind of all in one group and it's called a toggle group. That's what uh, um, we uh, we would call it. So we put them all into a toggle group and then it'll only allow one of them to be on at a time. So let's go set that up in the initialize method. So again, I'm in the controller. I'm going to go down to my initialize method and then here. I'm going to set up a toggle group. So let's call it the uh, favorite language toggle group. And actually, I'm going to make that, uh, I'm going to add this as a instance variable up here as well. So I'm just going to say private toggle group fave language toggle group. We'll say that's a new toggle group. Okay, so all we're doing is we're going to put them all in the same grouping together. And let's just get our imports here. Again, make sure it's JavaFX. And let's see here. I had the C radio button. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set the toggle group. The same thing for so it was C plus plus so C sharp. I'll set its toggle group. So this is how you tell it basically that they're all together. Great. 
so now they're all they're all uh, <coughs> they're all together. So now if we run this, if I try to select Java, you see how it turns off PHP, and if I try to check the next one, it it only allows one of these to be updated at a time. So now they behave as a group. So that's the whole purpose of the toggle group with radio buttons. So then that's all in our initializer, initialize method. The other thing is we wanted to update that label uh, when, whenever that radio button changes. And we can do that. So we're going to set a method that uh, will recognize that change. So Okay, so again, I like I like method names that describe exactly what's going on. So if the radio button changed, let's call this. So I'm going to say if, and now I can refer to this toggle group, right? So uh, what do I call it? Fav language toggle group. I can get the selected toggle. Okay. So what it does is it figures out which one, uh, which button's been pushed, and I say if it equals. Let's see here, the uh, start at the top here. So it's a C plus plus radio button. So if it equals, <clears throat> if the toggle group is changed and when it reads in which button's been pushed, if that's exactly the same as the C plus plus radio button, then what I can do is I'll, I'll say radio button label. I can update the label now. I'll say set the text and I'll say the selected item is C++. And then if it's not that, I can say, OK, well, let's see here if it, uh, maybe it's C sharp. Typing here. PHP. And our favorite job. Okay, I'll hit save. Let's run it. Oh, looks like I got a typo, it's gonna crash. There we go, yeah. A little problem there. Let's get rid of that. Hit save. Run it again. Okay, so now if I select Java or C, oh, it still doesn't work. Now the issue here is we still need to actually connect that method, and that toggle group, up to our view. So right now it's not. We have created a method, but we don't actually call it whenever any of these things have changed. So. Let's set that up next. So go back into Scene Builder. And you can actually, if you hold down the control key, you can multi-select these items. And I'm going to say on action. And we'll say radio button changed. So that was the name of our method. File, save. It updated our FXML document. Come back into NetBeans. Let's run our program. So now if I click on PHP, it says the selected item is PHP. Click on Java, it says the selected item is Java. And it works for C Sharp and C++ as well. So there you have it. We were able to add radio buttons to our view. And <clears throat> again, by using these uh, VBoxes uh, in terms of containers, it's really nice and organized what we have here.
All right. So uh, what we need to do now is we need to upload this to GitHub so you can access it. So let's go into projects, right click, make a new commit. We'll say we added the radio button example. Commit. And we'll go to remote push. Okay, and now if you go into GitHub, okay, so when you go to GitHub, do GitHub slash Jarrett Wright, and then you can see under my repositories the GUI demo we've been working on. And if you go in here, you can actually go right into the source files. And there's the uh, FXML, the controller, and the little uh, class we use to, uh, to launch it. So there you have it. If you need it, you just you can click on it. You can uh, you can open the file in the desktop and do whatever you like. All right. Cheers. Take care.